Hello and welcome to my channel, The Fifth Vault. Yesterday I made a patch that had a rather creepy soundscape. And today I want to show you in detail how I made this patch and explain to you what were the techniques that I used to have all these modules working together. Let's see a little quick uh, excerpt from that patch. This patch came about when I was playing around with the Polar Mix module from A Modular. This is a new module that is a CV mixer that does offsets and bipolar attenuation of signals. And on the wiki it says put in three LFOs to see um, some modular mayhem. And that's what I did. So I put in three LFOs and just, you know, wanted to find out what happens. And then I got this creepy filter sound and everything else just evolved from there. And this is how it usually works with my patches. I don't have a musical background. I don't have any formal education. I don't play another instrument. So what I'm doing is just experimenting and trying things out. And um, sometimes something comes out that I actually rather like to listen to. And then I put it up as a video. In any way, in this piece, I use a lot of modules in interesting ways. And I thought I'd share this, uh, my thought processes with you so that maybe you can use that in your own explorations of modular synthesis and the A-modular system. So I hope you will find this useful and thanks for watching. Now let's get right into it and we will look at the seven different voices that make up this patch. So first we will have a look at the seven different voices that this patch is made of. The first voice, which is on channel number one on this mixer up here, is the creepy filter. This is made of, of the FMOS module uh, going through a Nile, Nile filter, which is uh, controlled by the, uh, the polar mix from three different LFOs. And I will tell you how that all works um, in a minute. The second voice is the two note drone. So this is on channel number two, and this is coming out of the second Nile filter, which gets fed the saw box. This is a two note drone, and that's really interesting um, how this is patched, because to have a change between two notes, you could either use the sequencer 16, but it's a bit of a waste to use 16 steps and then only have two. So I'm using a different um, method to get a switch between the two notes. The third voice is the MS-20 bass drum, and that is on the second mixer here, or channel number three, to be honest. And uh, that is actually made with the MS-20 filter, which I found works really well as a drum, so a drum voice. Then there's a fourth voice, and that is some uh, noise that comes in and just sounds disturbing, and that is all coming from the algodron. Then on the fifth voice, I have some off-tune pling-plong, and that is really uh, an eight-step sequence on the sequencer down here that goes through an um, oscillator, the OSCD, um, and just creates that pling-plong that you see here very faintly in the background. The sixth voice is the Solina, and the Solina gets a very short envelope, so it actually sounds like an orchestral hit and that is on channel number two on the ad mix. And the seventh voice is an atmospheric synth that I've uh, created to uh, give a little bit of movement later on, and that is controlled by my keyboard, which is off the uh, uh, image here, so you can't see that at the moment. But this is controlling another oscillator, and that oscillator goes through a, a wasp filter, and then going through the spring reverb, and through a delay, 
to make that really eerie and long sounding and large sounding. And in the end, everything goes through the multi effects and um, what you can then hear is just more space around all of that and making it more eerie. So um, let's look at the first voice, which is the creepy filter. So let's listen to the first voice again, that is the creepy filter, and that is sounding like this. So what you can hear is that it, it, it has some strange variations of a cutoff frequency. So uh, this voice is how it all started when that I was using the polar mix and I put into the polar mix I put three LFOs, this LFO right here, which is by the way also my master clock, and that has a fairly fast period. And then I have the two other LFOs from these two LFO module and here's another fast one and a slower one. And all these three LFOs get mixed in the polar mix with an offset and they have different types of attenuations on them to create just that sound. So I was experimenting with different types of um, negative or positive offsets. That was all quite interesting until I got this really eye-rhythmical sound which I really liked. So the outcome of the polar mix then is going to this null filter here and is controlling the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter of this null filter. And the input to the null filter is coming from the FMOS, so the frequency modulation module that is fairly new in the A modular system, and that is uh, giving it a little bit of a bell like sound, as you can hear again here. So here you can see really, uh, hear really well how these three LFOs are kind of struggling uh, with each other and enveloping each other and changing the cutoff frequency in ways that just one LFO couldn't do. The next voice in the system is a two-note drone. The two-note drone is basically just the Sawvox module that is getting two different notes. And I think it's going through and it's going through this null filter right here and then going into channel number two. So let's listen to how that sounds like. So what you can see here is that on the 3VC switch you can see that this is switching between uh, uh, A and B. And every time it switches you get a different note. And this is going into the, um, into the Solvox as, as the um, uh, frequency. It's also going into the Selena which I uh, explain to you uh, later. But this VC switch is changing the tone or the pitch between the two notes. Now where do, they, do these come from? These come from, uh, so in this case the VC switch has the inputs on the right hand side and the output on the left. I think I told you in my other video where I explained the three VC switch in more detail that it depends on your patching whether it goes from left to right or from right to left. In this case it's a right to left patch. So two inputs here are coming from a 4 ad mix down here at the bottom. And here I just patched plus 5 volt into the first two channels and I use the level attenuators to create those two frequencies that are making up these two no notes. And these two channels are then going to the VC switch here and the gate that changes the channels is coming from an LFO down here which is on the square wave LFO and it is set to a fairly large pulse width and a very low rate. 
and this is exactly the weight of uh, the switching the notes that is required for this drone. Now here I'm using one, two, three modules to create a two note sequence and that seems like overkill but using a 16 step sequencer and only using the first two steps is also overkill. So unless some uh, robot develops a module that only switches between two notes, which would be really useful, I think, um, you have to do it like that. But it, it does work. And this is, the Sawvox has this deep voice, which is really nice as a background drone. Especially if you uh, add a little bit more reverb. The next voice on the list is the MS-20 bass drum. So let's listen to that. There are two things to this uh, drum. The first one is that it is coming from this MS-20 filter here, uh, which is going through a VCA. And the MS-20 filter, as you can see here, has no input. So it is in self-resonating mode on a very low frequency and creates a really nice um, low sound if it's just resonating by itself. So I'm using it actually as an oscillator. It's going through a VCA, which gets a very snappy envelope from, uh, let's, let's follow that, uh, probably from here, from this envelope at the top here. And the envelope is triggered by the topograph at the top here. Now the topograph is getting a clock from this LFO, which I said at the beginning is my master clock for the whole patch. So I'm taking the clock out here, not just into the creepy patch, creepy filter, but also going into the topograph and then it's also going into uh, it's also going into the sequencer down here. So this is my master clock. The bass drum is coming from the topograph, so I get a little bit of a different rhythm than just putting it through, let's say, the multi divider or the trig one six four. The next uh, voice in the system is the algodrone, and the algodrone is offering what it can really uh, do very well: just some creepy noises. Let's listen to those. So if you put the algodrone, as I've done here, through a filter, and then the filter into a VCA with a, a slow, um, uh, I think this is controlled, so going through a filter here and uh, into this VCA, which is then controlled by another LFO. So it's coming in and out and is not always present and just gives a little bit of a a creepy atmosphere as, as this noise is really unexpected and rather chaotic coming from the algodrone. So it's really, really nice if you use the algodrone in a subtle way. The next uh, sound or voice in the system is what I call the off-tune pling-plong. And this is uh, this voice down here.
So unfortunately in my video I made a mistake because it was a live take and I didn't want to redo it. But I had uh, one uh, step in the sequence uh, being too high and I just created a really uh, s a sound that wasn't quite in tune with this um, little sequence. But what this really is, is really just a um, uh, the sequencer going through eight steps and is driving this oscillator up here, the OCD, which is then going, and uh, let's follow along, which is then going into the WASP filter, from the WASP filter again into a VCA, and uh, it gets a fairly short envelope to create this pling-plong uh, sound. So this is really nothing special. Sequence, going into an oscillator, going into a filter, going into a VCA, going into the mixer. Uh, standard stuff. And it's out of tune because I tuned this for a completely different patch a while back and I just reused it. I didn't even know what that was and didn't retune it, but it sounded for this atmosphere creepy enough that I could just use it. The next voice um, in this whole patch is what I call the orchestral hit. And this sounds like this. So the orchestral hit is the Solina module, which is getting the same two notes like the Sorvox drone or the two-note drone. So they are sharing the same note, and uh, that's why they are in tune with each other. So I kind of tune it by ear, so it might not be perfect because I don't have perfect pitch, obviously. So, but they are kind of uh, working together. Um, so if you have that here, and the drone, And you can hear that sometimes the note changes in the middle of the um, hit, which is because it's uh, the hit is coming, uh, the Solina is going into a VCA, and the VCA is controlled by an envelope which is triggered, fairly short envelope, which is triggered by the topograph on channel number two. So I'm using the Solina instead of a pad or a drone as a... Uh, I've been using it most of the time. I'm using it here as a part of the percussion background, so to speak. So that's why you have this hit, which I think works actually quite well. The last voice in this whole set is the atmospheric synth. And um, this synth is again just another oscillator. And you can see that here I have the oscillator with the bus CV. So it's coming from the MIDI keyboard. And uh, then it's going uh, through this cable into my second WASP filter here. And then from the WASP filter, it's going into my newly acquired spring reverb, which is on, yeah, has a little bit of feedback, has a little bit of bet in it. And then from the spring reverb, it's going into the delay, which has quite a lot of feedback and a lot of wet in it. Uh, with a short delay, and then it's going into this channel. So what this does is that it gives us some really long-running, creepy sound. So it sounds like this.
So I think going through a spring reverb, going into a delay, and then everything is going through the um, multi-fx uh, reverb again. So that just gives us this long sound. These are all the seven voices. So again, uh, the last one was the oscillator, going through a wasp filter, into the spring reverb, going into the delay, and then um, everything going into the multi-fx. And there's some kind of very, very long envelope um, in there as well. So you can probably see that when I hit the note here. Oh, I'm using actually the envelope down here, which is a uh, very, very long decay as well. The spring reverb is really, really nice. So I will make another video about that some other time, but it, it really adds to the character of the whole synth. So these were all the voices um, explained. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And otherwise, happy patching and thanks for watching. See you next time.